Hello everyone, welcome to the Mixer Reality Toolkit tutorial series part 2 and uh, in this uh, section we are going to uh, see in detail about profiles. So what are profiles? In the last one, we uh, last two video we saw that when we installed the Mixer Reality Toolkit and applied to our application in the scene, uh, it, we selected a default profile. So profiles are nothing but uh, a configuration system. Uh, you know, which is used, uh, which is used to configure your application behavior for your mixed reality applications in Unity. So it helps you configure the, uh, you know, each of the features offered uh, by the Unity. Uh, I mean, by the mixed reality toolkit. So. Uh, it is actually divided into uh, multiple subsystems, which we, we are going to see right now. Uh, but to start with, the Mixed Reality Toolkit here, what you see is having a default HoloLens 2 configuration profile. So there are multiple uh, configuration profiles which comes uh, along with the foundation package of the uh, uh, toolkit. So if you look at it, this is the default HoloLens 1 configuration profile, which is optimized for, uh, all the configurations are optimized for HoloLens 1. And we have chosen uh, the default HoloLens 2 configuration, which means most of this uh, configuration is optimized for HoloLens 2, like eye gaze and uh, articulator hand interaction and everything. Now, this is the default Mixed Reality Toolkit configuration, which is kind of like a generic one which will support both the hololens as well as the vr devices and things like that right so and the rest of them which you see most of them are subsystems like a speech input gesture dictation eye tracking all of them and we, we are going to see uh, look at each of them right uh, or uh, this particular video now uh, so let's uh, in if in our case this application on the, or this particular entire tutorial series is going to be uh, you know we are going to use the HoloLens 2 configuration profile and uh, uh, and we are going to modify it we are going to add to it and we are going to create our own uh, over the course of the series for 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 this one I'm going to give a uh, walkthrough of each of those subsystems and uh, its uh, internal uh, workings. So let's see, uh, in, in this main uh, configuration profile, you can see in the left, there are uh, camera, which is on one subsystem, and uh, input, boundary, teleport, spatial awareness, diagnostics, scene system, extensions, and editor. Right. So uh, we uh, for for a, in any kind of application that you're going to create, you most of the time you won't be using all of them at the same time. So let's take a uh, camera to start with. This is one of the most common uh, where I mean you will be definitely using this uh, in most of your in all your applications. So for every subsystem, uh, for every, uh, this is the cam camera profile. If you look at it, the default HoloLens to camera profile. Now, one thing yet that you need to note is that when you load the Mixer Reality Toolkit for the first time, or, and you apply the default configuration profile, it's all read-only. That means you cannot really modify uh, any of the uh, set values. It's all pre-configured. The reason is that, uh, you know, in order to give your project a common starting point, that's the reason it's read-only. And you have two options there. You can copy and customize, which means it will simply copy all the values here and create a new profile, which will which we'll see in shortly, and or create an entirely new profile where or these values won't be uh, retained. You'll have to set all those values yourself, right? So I generally recommend uh, copy and customize unless you really know what and each and every single field of it and what exactly you're doing, right? Uh, so let's go with the camera one. So in the camera one, uh, first thing is to enable the camera system. Right, so this will enable the camera system on startup, and then it has the camera settings here, and there are opaque and transparent. This is basically for opaque, basically is for all the virtual reality related, where the display is opaque, right, uh, for, for the virtual reality devices. That's where, uh, and for that, it will automatically detect what kind of device it is, and it will apply these settings either like near clip, far clip, and all. So the in, internal, all these internal values and everything will be, will be, uh, and I'll be explaining all these 
um, when we progress into the over the next videos uh, on uh, you know uh, in detail when we start uh, you know working on our application building our application and designing it so uh, right now you, you know uh, you just need to know that okay this is uh, the opaque display settings are for the VR and the transparent display settings are for the uh, you know MR or AR basically uh, in this case HoloLens and uh, it could apply to Magic Leap in future so uh, it basically set you the quality settings. The background color is black because uh, for HoloLens, uh, you know, uh, everything is black means it will represent the true uh, real world, uh, you know, pixels. So that's basically transparent. That's what it means. And uh, far clip and near clip are basically the camera clips where it is applied. Uh, you know, so basically it says that, hey, anything beyond, uh, it, this is in meters, uh, so anything beyond uh, uh, 0.1, render it to the camera or render it to the screen and anything, uh, clip everything after 50 meters, right? And um, this is for clear, uh, you know, uh, clear flags actually, basically it reminds, uh, determines what to clear and rendering a camera for an opaque display. Uh, so this generally doesn't apply uh, in our scenario. Now, uh, so there is a, that's basically the camera system. Uh, the next one is the important system, one of the most important uh, profile or the subsystem in the entire MRTK uh, toolkit is the input subsystem. So it actually defines every single uh, input uh, feedbacks and every input actions that your system can uh, work with. Uh, you know, um, so let's let's get into that again. We have to de enable the input system. If you look at that, and uh, we have a default HoloLens 2 input system profile, right? And uh, we'll look into that later. Uh, input system settings is basically we need to give a focus provider type. Uh, basically, that determines uh, you know that is the one which actually determines which object is in focus or uh, in the current scene, like that. Uh, and if you, uh, I mean, other settings are there, which will go in detail. Now, the input data providers are another important one. So, these are platform specific uh, providers. So, consider it like for each platform, like let's say for Oculus or for HoloLens or for Windows 10 platform or Open Open VR, all of them have their own uh, platform specific SDKs, and the uh, which will provide the uh, data or input. Uh, from those systems back to the uh, you know Unity app, so these are specific platform those pa platform specific uh, implementations, uh, which is basically uh, to provide the data for e e each of those platforms and back to the application. So this Windows Mixer Reality Device Manager is basically for uh, you know Windows uh, Windows 10 platform, Windows Universal, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, the gaze and all those things uh, which will come from the Windows Mixer Reality device. Open VR is for, uh, you know, Open VR basically uh, all um, non Windows 10. Uh, this is basically the Unity based uh, uh, platform. And uh, then for uh, the Unity joystick input provider. And for the uh, any for touch devices in uh, for Unity, then Windows Speech and Windows Dictation both are only for all the Windows 10 platform applications. Uh, it doesn't and for Hololens, it doesn't apply to any other ones. Then hand joint is for articulated hand, where you can actually you know make your hand gestures and things like that. So this is uh, the hand joint service provides that feedback on uh, you know the hand uh, or the you know the uh, the hand pointer present in the screen, uh, present in the scene at the point at that at any point. Now input simulation service we already briefly saw it uh, in the last uh, video. Uh, so that one is uh, basically uh, to help you with simulating the uh, AR and uh, MR kind of experience and the gestures and things that you would do on a real application once you deploy it. Uh, this, this particular system, uh, you know, service will allow you to, uh, you know, uh, simulate that in the editor itself. So it's, it will be easy for you to uh, develop your applications and debug it fast uh, without deploying it every time to the actual device, 
right? So uh, you can see for the camera control is enabled and the mouse sensitivity scale, you can adjust those things. And uh, for example, if you want to turn on eye simulation, you can check this point and it will simulate the, uh, you know, the gaze, uh, eye gaze. Uh, pointers and uh, for hand simulation it's already set it as articulated hands then uh, to toggle left hand and toggle right hand key which we saw last uh, in the last lecture uh, you know uh, how to keep the left hand or right hand always on in the screen uh, so and then right hand manipulation key space we saw that uh, and the left hand manipulation key that also we saw so those are the few things that we have already seen and so we can actually go ahead and manipulate it uh, you know change these values to whichever we feel like or that suits our needs uh, so we can all change those and uh, hand gesture settings are basically for you know uh, using a uh, creating different kind of gestures using our mouse uh, and mouse keys uh, uh, same for uh, hand rotation placement and everything here now for uh, eye gaze provider, uh, this one provides the actual uh, the pupil movement uh, fr uh, from uh, you know from your eyes back to the uh, back to the application. So it will uh, you know this is the implementation specifically for that. Now smooth eye tracking is basically basically saying uh, you know not to use the jerky movements but you know make it smooth. So it will do some uh, smoothing operations and. Uh, uh, input recording uh, is basically again, uh, you know, so that you can uh, replay it in your system. Uh, once you record these input feed uh, feeds into your application, so you can uh, take it, uh, record it, and then play it again. So you know, so mostly for debugging purposes and things like that. Um, so similar with the playback uh, services, also, it's uh, these basically go hand in hand. Um, recording and playback I mean so uh, that's basically for uh, so if you look at it yeah that this data provider itself is a huge subsystem with an input and then uh, we have pointers so pointers uh, are nothing but uh, you know uh, you know the the type which is used or in this case the configurations which we use to specify how a pointer uh, should look like uh, and uh, should behave and the pointers are basically uh, you know uh, what is used to uh, bring the focus onto a particular object and uh, communicates back to the user uh, you know uh, where it is where uh, the user is pointing at or a controller is pointing at and every pointer is basically attached to a controller a controller can have one or more pointers actually uh, for example a, uh, in a VR device a controller can and have a straight pointer which will uh, show you uh, where it is you know you're pointing your controller towards or where uh, you're focusing your uh, controller to and then it can also have a curved pointer a parabolic pointer which is you, you might have uh, seen it actually uh, which will tell you uh, you know if you want to teleport uh, to a particular location within your VR application so it so that basically gives that particular controller a VR controller two pointers so yeah that's that's another thing that is uh, possible so this uh, this system basically this configuration profile basically tells you how you can co you know uh, uh, configure it so basically the prefabs are the ones which you use to uh, you know uh, show it uh, show that display the pointer if you if you play this app and you can you can actually see there will be a pointer there so you if, if, if you see it now uh, you can see that there is a pointer you know see I'm just zooming it up yep there you go so that's basically the pointer settings uh, which will tell you now where I am looking at so that's that's the prefab which, I, which is being used in this case it's the default prefab so uh, again, this is applicable for uh, for different kind of controllers and uh, different kind of uh, handedness and different kind of prefabs uh, like touch or a parabolic pointer as I just mentioned, mostly for uh, VR and uh, mouse pointers, poke pointers. Poke pointers are used in uh, uh, HoloLens. Uh, you know when you are near an object. 
and the grab pointer similar thing ggb pointer is basically gaze uh, gesture and voice pointer which is mostly used for uh, hololens one and uh, uh, what else he said yeah those are the, some of those pointers which you have and then you can see the default uh, settings that you have within the pointers if you want to draw a debug line to see uh, you know uh, a you know the actual ray of pointing so that's uh, one thing that you can turn on here and then uh, pointing extend how long the pointer should draw uh, in this case it says uh, 10 as a value so you can manipulate that you can change it to whichever that you know uh, whichever suits your application needs so that's the next section within input uh, then we have the input actions so input actions are nothing but an abstract uh, representation of operations that you do in in your application basically in simple words when you design your mixed reality experience you're going to have different uh, scenarios all right that you allow within your application and uh, there will be uh, you are going to define the number of operations a user is allowed to do for example like selecting the menu or um, uh, so you can see that the selecting the menu or uh, grabbing an object or uh, you know um, showing an okay or pointing at an object uh, so manipulating uh, an object to resize or something like that so you can you can do a set of uh, operations uh, using maybe your hands or maybe your controller and things like that so those are the ones which are actually represented uh, here as actions right uh, so you define the operations that you allow the user to do in your application in abstract terms as input actions and then you specify here what kind of action it is for example a select is mostly you are going to press a button which is digital right uh, or menu same thing but when it comes to grip pose where it is there is six degree of freedom uh, like uh, using an articulated hand and things where there is a rotation and a vector and everything so you'll give it as a six degree of freedom so we are going to create a uh, our own profile and uh, uh, input actions for when we start with our application design so the input actions rules as basically uh, you know uh, used for creating alternate rules or alternate actions based on the base input actions that we defined already uh, by specifying some constraints or criteria actually so uh, we will see how we can create uh, you know uh, input action rules later uh, not in this particular uh, video uh, but what we do is like we set uh, you know uh, one of our operation or input action as the base input action and then uh, we said okay if uh, on top of it we add a criteria so if it is this a particular input action which also meets this criteria translate it as a different action right so that's basically uh, the gist of it um, also the input action uh, why we are defining it here uh, is because it helps you to focus on your application logic and uh, you know operations rather than uh, the inner details of it so you don't you can I, in just right next we are going to see in controller sections how we map each actions to each controllers right each controllers physical inputs so based on so you don't have to later worry once you do this mapping you don't have to later worry uh, how am I going to handle a particular input from a physical device rather you'll be concentrating on these actions or uh, you'll be ha you just need to handle these actions with respect to your application logic so that's basically uh, the purpose of it to abstract the physical operations but and concentrate on the actual uh, application uh, actions operations so in controllers now for the input mapping so that's what we discussed below we already defined our input actions here now we have to map these actions to physical inputs so that's where we are going to do, uh, we will do it here in controller definitions so if you expand it 
you will see different kind of controllers right which supports you can see that articulated hand which will be doing a uh, using it in our application and then for hololens voice and clickers and uh, ggv left hand controller and right hand controller mouse touch screen xbox controllers oculus there are a lot many and a lot many we might be added in the future so uh, you uh, once it is enabled you are, we are going to create our own profile for this one and you click on one of these it will uh, you know actually pop up a, a window which will show you each uh, you know the each physical triggers and buttons uh, which are associated with that particular controller and how you want to map your input actions to that particular uh, physical inputs so that's what basically you're going to define it here now uh, in controller visualization it's basically we, we might not be using this one actually but uh, uh, to explain uh, this is basically when you want to see or visualize that controller in your scene so you get a perspective of it so you can use that and you can define what kind of controllers you want to uh, you know to include in your scene to be visualized now gestures gestures are basically uh, you know uh, the kind of uh, actions or uh, user inputs which is performed through different kind of uh, for example hand gestures right uh, that's basically what uh, this is about and uh, you can define uh, what kind of manipulation gestures the navigation gestures uh, and uh, you know uh, just auto start your uh, gesture recognition system and things like that and it will also tell you for uh, different uh, gestures and what that corresponds to uh, a different action which we already de defined in an input action so basically you're going to define uh, your different gestures here so you can later handle it when uh, when it detects these gestures and you can, uh, and it uh, represents what action that you have already defined and uh, these are this this particular uh, section the gesture section is specifically for hololens at this point and uh, it is not really uh, meant for any other kind of devices just for hololens actually so that's why there is already an enumerated value of the supported gestures within hololens so uh, it simply says that okay this is the actual gesture in hololens and i got i want to name it as these and these are the actions uh, you know which it corresponds to uh, same with uh, speech uh, with the speech there is a, a small difference um, again uh, for the fields it's basically starting the general settings and you know recognition confidence level medium you know you it's pretty straightforward things and then you can give your keywords to recognize along with a key code to simulate it in your editor right uh, and then the corresponding actions again these actions corresponds to the actions that we defined in our input actions so that means when I say or when I speak this particular word or press this particular key it means this action within my application and it needs this action needs to be triggered or if you're handling it right so that's what uh, this speech commands mean right uh, this is not for uh, this is basically for uh, you know keyword recognition and not for dictation and again the speech is also restricted to hololens and windows 10 platform devices only and not for uh, any other uh, uh, you know any other devices this means basically windows mixed reality sets uh, which runs on windows 10 platform and then for hololens actually at this point so and the last one in the input system is the hand tracking uh, so the hand tracking is again uh, this is specifically for uh, hololens 2 if you look at that that's why it has a default hololens 2 hand tracking profile which says the joint prefabs and what are the basically different prefabs which needs to be used while it's tracking a hand it's for the palms the fingertip and the hand mesh and everything uh, you all, uh, already saw it when we were running it actually you know, uh, no, how to when we were simulating it as a matter of fact so yeah you can see this right so this is basically hand, track, hand tracking in the work um, so there is no mesh visualization we are not visualizing the whole mesh uh, 
and in editor we are uh, visualizing the hand joints which is what you just saw the mesh if you enable it it's going to be uh, it's going to cost uh, there's going to be a performance penalty it's going to take a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, power processing power actually so careful when you turn this on make sure you know what you want and you what you do All right uh, so that's that's the whole uh, input systems back to configuration profile you can go and that's basically the input system and then the boundary system and if you look at it in HoloLens since we chose HoloLens 2 configuration boundary system is disabled because this is specifically for uh, most for VR systems uh, where with uh, uh, opaque, di uh, opaque uh, display systems so that's where you set a boundary and uh, uh, you will define uh, to you know where uh, the user can walk to to what limit and all those things because you are creating a predefined world unlike a, a, a device like hololens where where you can actually see the real world and walk around so this is basically disabled so we won't be using it in our lectures but we will definitely go through uh, the visualization settings uh, again it's basically to just the visualization purposes uh, you can set your floor settings, the play area, the tracking, boundary wall, ceiling, and everything. That's that's pretty much it. Uh, a simple system. And then uh, similar with the teleport. Again, uh, mostly with uh, the VR systems. So this is actually disabled, and uh, there is nothing. Uh, once you enable it, you can actually configure a couple things. That's that's it. Now spatial awareness. If you look at it, the spatial awareness is uh, actually disabled by default, uh, and we will be enabling this feature uh, in our application in the future lecture. Uh, I'm not turning it on right now because it doesn't work in the Unity editor uh, itself. So we have to put it in a simulator to see it in its uh, see it working so uh, once we are ready once we have defined the other important pieces in the next lectures uh, we will turn this on and once we reach here we will we will work on this one right so basically it explains about uh, this is applicable to all spatial scanning uh, capable systems like hololens 2 hololens 1 maybe in future again uh, for magic leap and things like that once we enable this we can actually uh, you know set a special mesh observer uh, simply you know scanning the surroundings and uh, forming the special uh, mesh and uh, uh, based on that you can uh, you know uh, do your own uh, configuration and uh, uh, texture apply your own texture and uh, you can do a lot of things actually apply physics on it uh, you know so it will uh, it will you know your virtual uh, objects can actually interact with the spatial i mean you know real world objects actually so uh, within the observer settings uh, you can have the startup behavior simply says that uh, you know if it needs to auto start or manual start and then updating interval means that how often it needs to update the uh, you know the spatial mesh uh, or the system needs to uh, scan and update and uh, what should be the shape of the observer in this case it's a cube so this simply means that uh, when it scans it's it uh, the surroundings uh, it scans for a you know in a cube shaped so you can set it to a sphere or uh, or a cube so it will scan accordingly so that's basically its perimeter right that's basically its uh, board boundary uh, it in the shape of a cube in this case so that's what it does uh, and what is the extent of the cube so it's basically three to three to three right and uh, yeah the physical layer we have seen that there is already one created so for recasting purpose and everything and the recalculating normals is basically to uh, you know uh, every time a new mesh or whenever it scans that's what this update is about whenever it scans uh, and updates the mesh it has to recalculate all the normals again to make sure that all the meshes are aligned properly uh, with respect to the you know uh, uh, with with respect to the surface it it represents so level of details again uh, course uh, generally uh, it simply means how much uh, you know uh, polygons are generated for the mesh the how, the detail of the mesh actually so i would actually recommend by uh, you know to go uh, unless you really want crystal clear uh, level of detail 
take something like a low or a medium so that it, your performance is not impacted. Same with the triangles per cubic, cubic meter when it comes to a presentation. Uh, you know, uh, how much, again, uh, if you are setting it to uh, a particular enumerable value here then this value is ignored but if you are setting this one as a custom value then this particular uh, level of detail is ignored now uh, in display settings you can actually set your wireframe that you want to uh, show uh, you know as your material of your spatial mesh and uh, if it is visible of course so if you want to apply uh, occlusion material uh, for occlusions, then you can uh, add a material to this one. It's very useful in scenarios when, uh, you know, the spatial map uh, obstructs an actual virtual object in your scene. Uh, like, uh, let's say a ball or a, a, you know, a virtual object is obstructed by a table, a real world table or some, th those kind of scenarios. You might want to notify the user that, hey, uh, this particular object is actually, or a partial uh, part of that object is, uh, you know, uh, obstructed by, uh, the view is obstructed by the table uh, right in front of you. So in that scenario, you might want to apply this particular uh, uh, rendering material to notify that maybe a, like a wireframe rather than it's actual, actual texture or something like that. So you can apply those features. Now, that's basically for spatial awareness systems. Now, diagnostics. Diagnostics is a simple system. Uh, so it we already saw that in action when we played it. Uh, it simply shows the, uh, the the frame rates, the CPU, the I mean, you know, the memory, and those uh, small details. So in diagnostics, you can actually. Uh, see these uh, you know uh, the frame rates the ram and uh, a few other things uh, which will help you with the debugging uh, but the thing is make sure that when you build your application and deploy to as a final build to disable this uh, diagnostic system in order to make sure that you know uh, you don't have any performance penalties um, so yeah you don't want this uh, in in your final build you only need it in your uh, you know development phase actually so that's one thing uh, you need to be careful about. Now the scene system is basically a simple alternative to the uh, scene manager in Unity. So uh, basically when you, uh, the only reason you want a scene system uh, is when, uh, you know, for multiple factors, right? When your project has any multiple scenes or if you are used to a single scene loading, but uh, you don't like the way that, uh, you know, the Mixer Reality Toolkit instance is destroyed uh, or you want a simple way to uh, do uh, additive scene loading uh, in your experience, uh, in some, th those kind of scenarios is where you can go for a uh, scene system. Uh, so the scene system, uh, basically enforces uh, several behaviors in the editor, Unity editor, uh, like uh, managing the build settings, enforcing scene order, and uh, manage loaded scenes, and things like that. So uh, in our case, we are not going to use it uh, as our ex uh, you know, example is going to be a single scene, and uh, uh, maybe in some other uh, advanced tutorials, we will uh, handle with the scene system, uh, maybe in detail. Uh, for now, we are, we are going to keep it turned off. Now, the extension services. The extension services are the components that extend the functionality of the Mixer Reality Toolkit. And uh, basically, all these subsystems and the features that you see is uh, the underlying uh, inner working of, uh, you know, uh, the Mixer Reality Toolkit is based on these extension services, actually, where you create uh, classes which implement some kind of interface and, uh, you know, registering it into a registry and using it in uh, a runtime to make use of it. The, the way, uh, that way you are actually, uh, if you're familiar with the Unity, you, you are actually decoupling that dependency on implementing a mono behavior every time and turning everything into a standard POCO, uh, you know, plain old C-sharp classes. So that's what it basically uh, does. So you can create your own extension service when you want to replace an existing feature with your own implementation or when you want to create or extend the toolkit with a new feature. And uh, uh, it's an advanced topic and we will be covering this one in detail in our future uh, tutorial within this series. The toolkit also provides a wizard to create these extension services and register it automatically. So during that, uh, when we are looking into the details of this one, we will also uh, look into this wizard uh, to see how you know we can create our own service uh, extension services and register it through the wizard as well as how to do it manually.
Now the last one in the subsystems is the one of the in, in editor feature called for uh, service inspector. So it is actually uh, used for generating in scene objects which represents the active services. Right? So when you select these objects, it displays the inspectors and uh, it will also provide documentation links and the control over editor visualization and insights in the state of that. Uh, service at any particular point in time. So uh, you can enable uh, this uh, service inspector by checking that uh, this particular checkbox, uh, you know, so we can uh, inspect those uh, uh, generated objects. Well, that's all about profiles so now you have seen and uh, in future videos over the course of the next tutorials, uh, when we use different features, we will be, uh, you know, taking uh, our creating our own profiles and, uh, you know, exploring and expanding on what we have learned in the design the, the previous videos. And in the next one, we uh, next uh, uh, video, we are going to see about, uh, uh, you know, interaction. We are going to create our action uh, for our application and uh, map it to a controller uh, mapping and also, uh, you know, handle that particular interaction and uh, a simple interaction in uh, to start with in the next one. Um, and uh, uh, that's pretty much it and uh, so I'll, if you have any comments or uh, feedbacks please let me know I'll answer your try to answer your questions uh, as much as possible and uh, yeah until then uh, bye and uh, thank you very much